This podcast is supported by FX's English Teacher, a new comedy from executive producers of What We Do in the Shadows and Baskets. English Teacher follows Evan, a teacher in Austin, Texas, who learns if it's really possible to be your full self at your job while often finding himself at the intersection of the personal, professional, and political aspects of working at a high school. FX's English Teacher premieres September 2nd on FX. Stream on Hulu. Want to teach your kids financial literacy, but not sure where to start? Greenlight can help. With Greenlight, parents can keep an eye on kids' spending and saving, while kids and teens use a card of their own to build money confidence. As a parent, you can send instant money transfers, set up chores, automate allowance, and more. It's a convenient way to run your household, customized to your family's needs, and the easy way to raise financially smart kids. Get started with Greenlight today and get your first month free at greenlight.com slash Spotify. This episode is brought to you by Experian. Are you paying for subscriptions you don't use, but can't find the time or energy to cancel them? Experian could cancel unwanted subscriptions for you, saving you an average of $270 per year and plenty of time. Download the Experian app. Results will vary. Not all subscriptions are eligible. Savings are not guaranteed. Paid membership with connected payment account required. Hey, everybody. Welcome. And thank you for listening to this episode of Marriage Therapy Radio. My name is Zach Brittle. I'm here with Laura Heck. Today, we're doing the uh, When Harry Met Sally question. It's the question of whether or not men and women can be friends. This is a question that Laura and I have been exploring for, I don't know, 10 years or so. Comes up a lot in our practices. We also got an email from a guy who was asking about it himself. So we, uh, we batted around. We talk about a handful of other things that are coming up for us in our lives and in our practices. Uh, one thing that happened this week is we each got a box of our book, Reconnect, which comes out on September 10th. We would love for you to support us and the podcast by pre-ordering the book, which you can do by going to marriagetherapyradio.com and clicking on the button there that says pre-order our book. And if you do that, go ahead and send us a receipt, send us an email or a direct message on the Instagram. And our publisher is uh, having a drawing to send out special treats for those of you who get behind the book early. It was really exciting to open the box. It's a gorgeous book. Can't wait for you to read it. But for now, again, we're exploring that when Harry met Sally question. This is a very cool conversation. Stick around. Why do you have energy? I have energy because I think I'm healing my gut. Oh, I, I know. That's I know. Pretty nice. It's like an actual the, thing that you've been trying to do. It is like an actual thing. And I have been, anytime there is a big star in the household, I am, I'm like sharing it with my family. I'm like, I'm, I, I am a pooper today. It's just oh really God. good news. Yeah. Is that too much? I, no, but I did have new people, like new clients, and they were like, yeah, I got to know you through your podcast. But the yeah. first one I listened to, your partner was talking about pooping, like that yeah. she was pooping. I was like, I know. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Anyway. I just try to normalize topics that are so taboo because here, I mean, it's one of those things that yeah. people don't talk taboo about sex. The, they don't talk yeah. about poop. They don't talk about money. And mm-hmm. these are important topics that mm-hmm. I just want to normalize it. And- mm-hmm. I'm like really money is an important topic for sure. Yes. So is sex. Not- <laughs> but yeah. So I just wanted to bring that full circle that I am yeah. on. I started doing, have I told you my morning routine? No. I'm very excited about it. I okay. have been juicing yeah. and it's like an anti-inflammatory juice uh-huh. and it's celery, cucumber, lemon, and ginger. And I think ginger is probably the big piece. Uh-huh. So there's like a balance of acidity. And then I put in a little bit of apple cider vinegar okay. and I drink that down kind of with my first clients of the day. My clients know like, oh, they're just drinking her green juice again. Oh. And then I've been adding in AG1, which if they want to be a sponsor of the show, <laughs> remember when we were like, this episode, yeah, is, brought this episode to you. is brought to you by AG1. AG1. Yeah. That would be really cool. So if yeah. you're listening and you have the hookup, we would love to be partnered with you because I'm really yeah. enjoying it. We would so love I to think get that paid that's... to do the thing we just did for free. I know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that, and I'm trying to eliminate dairy, which is very difficult because uh, it is my favorite of all time. So I, uh, I will say this though, about well, the kind of advertising thing, like as everyone knows, we're in the middle of trying to figure out how to refund or refinance this podcast. Cause we are having kind of whatever, but, um, <laughs> I, I've been shopping on Etsy a lot lately. Um, what for just stuff? Like I, I find, like I have an idea that I want. I'm like, I wonder if this exists and I'll go to Etsy and it mm-hmm. does exist. 
Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, I want to advertise for those people, like little mom and pops who are just trying to like yeah. make their life better. Like I don't need, we don't need to be shilling for like the major brands. Um, mm. I, I don't know who needs to hear this, but I, this is a thing that I've been thinking about. Like more consistent with who I am on the planet is I want to yeah. like support small businesses that are just trying to hustle and like make it work. So um, mm. anyway, maybe that's AG1, okay. who knows? Um, no, I don't think so. They have they have big right. big sponsorships. They're doing okay. <laughs> they're probably uh, on a smart list or something. Probably, yeah. Oh, here's what I was gonna say. Oh, you thanks. you look very handsome. There's oh, a thanks. glow um, about you, and I can just there there's something about you right now. So I just I had swam to say this that I got a mile. And I half think in that's what morning, it is. So. Like you're like awake yeah. and. Yeah. I haven't, I I've been awake for longer than 10 minutes. Totally. There's just something yeah. about you yeah. <laughs> not still yeah, in that yeah. sleep zone. By the way, Thanks. I posted, this is, I thought this was really funny. I don't know if you saw it. Um, so I don't manage the, the Instagram, right? We've got people right, that are really helpful with making it look nice, but I yeah. couldn't fall asleep last night. I was scrolling and I came across this guy who's talking in his sleep. So oh, he no. puts his earbuds in and don't you have, no, Tom has them. Uh, my buddy, Tom, where you put the earbuds in and it gives you like a white noise and it kind of helps you uh, fall uh, asleep. So you can uh, see the video of this guy. He's got his earbuds in. His wife is like laying next to him. She's scrolling on her phone and he's just jabbering away. And it's complete of anything. Right. So there's yeah. there's this one reel and he's talking about uh, faxing something to someone. So, you know, that like, he's totally in a dreamscape, right? Yeah. Yeah. And she's responding to him and she's like, well, what's the number? What do you need right now? And he's just blah, blah, blah. And he's kind of all over the place, but she keeps responding. And I took that. I was like, look at that. Even though this man is asleep, he has zero idea he, she is still turning toward his bids for oh, connection. Oh, look at you. Yeah. I know. So I posted it because yeah. I, I thought it was really cute that, that he was uh, chatting in his sleep and she was, even when he farts in his sleep, which is a thing that he does, she yeah. still is like, oh, she still responds. It's hilarious. Yeah. Okay. I'm done. I, uh, speaking of like looking handsome, um, oh, I had the okay. most bizarre experience this weekend or this last week. Um, my mom and her sister and my brother came to visit me. And I see my brother about once or twice every three years. Like I, it's not- Will you send me a picture of your brother? Because I've never seen him. Yeah, well, I hadn't seen him in a really long time. And and he walked in as a 47 year old man who looked exactly like my dad. Like (gasps) I- Did you have a response? I did. I was like, oh, whoa. Like, and you know, my dad who was raising me was 47. Like he, that's how old, I mean, that, that's how old my dad was when I was yeah, yeah. a person uh, when I knew him. Um, so I, I was like, whoa, this is so weird. And it made me think, is that what I look like? Who, who do I like? How, how do I, how does this work? You know, like, yeah. um, but, um, Anyway, it's it was weird. So even thinking about the two of us together, I have a picture of the two of us together that I'll send you here in a little bit. Yeah, but, um, it's weird how stuff kind of gets churned up for you, like uh, oh, as you gosh. get older, and you just sort of um, I don't know. It was it was bizarre. I so don't know can what I ask anything. you? Basically, I'm more. Ha- what I'm trying to say is I'm more handsome than my brother. Oh, okay. Phew. Yeah, that's that's that, that's the moral <laughs> of the story. Which means that you're also more handsome than your dad when he was 47. Yes, absolutely. Got it. Well, okay. I have this well, thing, right? Crushing like, I it, Zach. I definitely have like dad dad baggage for sure. No question. Yeah. And I yeah. think part of why I care about my my weight in particular is that he was a big man. He was a he was, mm-hmm. um and so because I don't have a lot of like I have contempt for him and his role in my life, the more I resemble him, the more I internalize that contempt, which Woof. is not It's not like, I know it's not hyper, I don't want to be like hyper insightful or whatever, but like. You internalize contempt for him or for yourself? For myself. Yeah. I turn that Uh in I'm like, oh, like, look at me, I'm like Mm -hmm. him or Mm -hmm. I like, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm, I'm not taking care of myself or I've let myself go or like all, whenever stories I make up. Yeah. But, um, so like, I remember, I remember very distinctly times that I've looked in the mirror and been like, whoa, there he is, you know, like, Uh and um, and then I get all hyper about trying to like take care of myself or whatever. But in this case, 
it was it was my brother. It was literally like this other guy across the table from yeah. me the whole time. And I was like, this is so bizarre. Um, yeah. But I have I have much less contempt for him and for myself lately. So it was not, it wasn't a, it was jarring, but not traumatic. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it was a, yeah. it was a notable experience, but not one that like mm-hmm. troubled me. But I, um, I don't know. I just think there's, there's little nuggets of insight and, and inquiry everywhere you turn. And this was one totally. of mine over the last couple of weeks. Last yeah. Week. Mm. Incidentally, they came out, remember to run a 1k. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We saw, well, the pictures haven't been released yet. Right. No, like we were going to show that you sent me I, pictures of them. I sent you. Um, but we ran this 1k, which, you know, it's called the lard, butt. And it's literally like every 250 yards, there was like a, just a tent full of Krispy Kreme donuts and then, you know, beer garden and all this stuff. So it was literally like, come get huge, come That's just right. gorge on carbs and sugar, yep. <laughs> you know, yep. at 10 o'clock in the morning. So was everybody else dressed up or did you and Rebecca oh, was, just decide everyone to dress was up? dressed up? No, everybody was dressed up. It was like that a is so total cool. festival. Yeah. Um, yeah. People in all kinds of costumes wearing just bizarre outfits. And we bought a bunch of capes and masks and we just, you know, and so our fun. whole little crew had capes and masks. That was our, that was our jam. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Um, that's very cool. Well, before we even hit record, I had to like have like a, a moment with Zach where I was like, hey, remember when we used to t- be able to talk to each other really openly about, so that's uh, how the podcast ever got started was that Zach and I would meet together and we would consult on cases. And this was kind of early on. And I mean, it was over 10 years ago, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's been, yeah, it's been a while, yeah. but it was, it was sort of new ish in at least both of our kind of mastery of Gottman method. And we've really evolved as, as therapists, but one of the things that we can't do is really speak super plainly about cases that are, we have going on. And so I had to pick his ear and mostly just say, I have had the best week. I mean, <laughs> as a therapist, you were not bored this week. I was not, I was working. I was working hard. I had some great new clients that came to me that are a little different from the usual genre that I work Uh with, had some sex cases, which is just awesome. Uh But I am super pumped. I've got lots of really interesting things that are very stimulating, which by the way, I have to say like the, the idea of having a job that is stimulating uh-huh. never really occurred to me how important it was because uh-huh. there's now two people in my life who basically said, I am super, cu- maybe more. They're in very cushy jobs. They're working minimally. I want to say they're maybe putting in half time and uh-huh. they're getting paid so much money, buckets of money, right? Uh-huh. It's just like on autopilot uh-huh. and they're unhappy and they uh-huh. want something more challenging. Uh-huh. And I, Everyone's one like, why? What is the deal with that? Like, just take your money and and find a hobby that's stimulating mm-hmm. for you. But it's yeah. not enough. And so yeah. a lot of these people are are transitioning out of their cushy jobs into something that's more intense, challenging, stimulating. And maybe after this week, I kind of understand why, because it mm-hmm. is very energizing. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, no, I get we, that. I get that. I, one thing I, when people ask me about my job, I always say I'm never bored. Nope. So. No, we're not. You know, sometimes I get, I get in a little bit of a rut maybe here and there, but I, so, I, I think people are fascinating and they're so different. Me too. You know, it's like, I've learned, learned to like people come in and uh, they're, I can't really fathom how they may pull it off. And my response maybe used to be like, oh, that's not going to work. And now I'm like, hmm, hmm. Uh, how does that work? How, yeah. How's that going to work? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, and so, okay. So can I, can I, I'm going to, I'm going to just sort of do some broad strokes here because that is a hundred percent what happened this. So uh, my preference, and I'll just say like, I uh-huh. understand that I, I create a relationship that fits my needs and is fulfilling for me. And in that relationship, we have pretty 50, uh, 50 exchange of parenting You're talking about with Ryan. Yeah. With Ryan, my husband. Yeah. yeah. But I had a relationship come through my door today. Very different. I mean, uh-huh. it was kind of like a 90, 10 type relationship. Uh-huh. And I just kept it in my mind as they were describing their roles that it was like, I basically, it's kind of like a parentified relationship where you have uh-huh. one partner that's a caretaker, the other person's being cared for uh-huh. and they're presenting this. And I, 
just kept thinking like, Ooh, I can see the discomfort. This is, this would not serve me in my relationship, but I had to pause. And I really was like, so what's wrong? I don't understand. Like, I understand that this is how it is currently. Is it serving you? Is it meeting Mm -hmm. your needs? Mm. And in some relationships, I think you have a caretaker role that feels really natural from childhood. It fulfills you. It meets your needs. It makes you wake up in the morning and you have a, a partner that loves to be cared for. And if you have found each other and it's working for you, that's where I'm kind of like, okay, if it's meeting your needs, if it's if it's not hurting anybody, then what's the problem? So I just sort of had to keep questioning like, I understand that this is how it is and it wouldn't work for me, but what isn't serving you? Is there anything that needs to be fixed in this dynamic? Turns out they don't like it either, but <laughs> um, I I didn't just automatically jump and assume that it wasn't working for them because for yeah. some people it does. Yeah. I, I think that's important. Like, I, I, and I tell couples, all, I mean, I tell people all the time, I go, I'll say something like, look, I understand that this is, well, what I'll say is, you know, they come into my, they come into our office because something's not working um, at, for at least one of them. Right. right. And so one of them has pulled, yeah. has created the environment. The other one though, it might be working for them. And totally. what I'll say to that person is, look, you, you might not have to change. Like you, it's you, what, what's working for you might be fine and, yeah. and totally appropriate and good. It just doesn't fun. It doesn't f- help this relationship. So you have to face that, that maybe this relationship is not the relationship for you. Like, I'm not trying to change you. I'm just telling right. you that, that the thing that you do that might be fine for you doesn't work. Here. For your partner. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And then that changes the, other, the conversation a little bit. Yeah. And something that we, I've been talking to a lot of people is like, this served you five years ago, seven years uh-huh. ago, 10 years ago, when you first got together, that was the phase of life where that was the roles that you fell into um, or chose. I don't think a lot of people are very intentional though, about their roles, about the way in which they divide up their, their family. Um, I think that they just kind of fall into old patterns of like, this is how it was when in our family of origin, or Uh this is what my friends are doing. Um, or this is easy, but in therapy, we get to hit, yeah, we get to, what is that? Is that Henry David Thoreau? Uh, you know what? If you send Renee to throw, I'm going to give you like major, major kudos. On Do you second. know, and I went to trivia night with Ellie and her family. Um, you've met Ellie. Remember her? Yes. Yes. So I went to trivia night and it was during prohibition. Socrates. Sorry. The unexamined life is not worth oh. living. <laughs> Shoot. But man, I was um, going to be like, damn, Laura, with the dang. Henry David throw. Yeah. Okay. So here's the trivia (laughs) question that I knew, and I'm going to ask you if you know it or if our listeners know it. During prohibition, the United States gave an unlimited open pass for alcohol to what international dignitary? Um, Winston Churchill. Yes, that is correct. And that was what I guessed. Yeah. Yeah. I don't actually know any other dignitaries uh, other than Winston I named Churchill. the only dignitary I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, during the 20s. Um, yeah. yeah. So I got that right. And everyone was like, dang, you're so smart. I'm like, yes, I am. Um, what was the most watched? You're a trivia guy. What was the most watched? Um, what is it? Final season finale of all time. Uh, Television show. Seinfeld. No, it was in 19, I want to say 89, 83, 1983. Most watched. Yes, that is correct. There you go. Is this your love language, by the way? Yes, I will do trivia all day long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Um, Should we talk about something that feels important to couples? Sure. We're batting around different ideas. We got an email from a guy. Yes. Okay. It was a very, very sweet email, by the way. It was. I appreciate when people reach out, but it does. I I was like, Ooh, I want to have more conversations with this. Um, I'm not going to read it word for word. This is all just based off of memory of what I read in the middle of the night when I was throwing the ball for the dog that happened last night. Um, is he said, Hey, I just wanted to say thank you for demonstrating what, um, a friendship can look like between sexes between you and I. Right. Um, so we're not married to each other. That's a, I think people still think we might be married partners. We are not married to each other. We don't live in the same state. 
but we are friends. So he said, I was in a time in my life and my relationship where I don't think I was, he said, I wasn't getting my emotional needs met and yeah. watching the two of you kind of helped me unlock and understand that you can have your emotional needs met and you can have friendships with the opposite sex. If that's uh -huh. this, basically the sex that you're attracted to. Uh -huh. um, and he had kind of put a lot of boundaries around that because he was trying to a fair produce, yeah, a fair, a fair protect, a, a fair, fair proof. proof. Yeah. Yeah. His relationship by having really sort of like firm boundaries, mm -hmm. but he has since been able to, to have really amazing friendships. And he uh -huh. just said, thank you for, for showing what that looks like. And I was like, that's interesting. Okay. Uh -huh. I, I didn't realize that we were modeling that, but I think uh -huh. we are in uh -huh. some ways. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. I can hear your airplane, by the way. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, yeah. I can hear it too. It's, yeah. Um, so I guess I'm kind of curious. It sounds like, like it's crashing. You... <laughs> it's like, it's like <laughs> you know, going it's... down in my back. <laughs> what it's is like, um, Lost? You know. It sounds like like yeah. the first scene of Lost, <laughs> yeah, <totally>. you know? <laughs> With like the screaming. Anyway. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'm just really curious, like what your thoughts are on kind of the idea of having relationships with people that you are attracted to, meaning the uh -huh. sex you're attracted to, not the person. Uh -huh. Yeah. And what those boundaries need to look I'm like. I'm not attracted to you at all. I think you're like, I, you like I am a very pleasant a garbage can. Yeah. Nope. I'm a very pleasant looking person. <laughs> yeah. I am. And I have a sparkling personality. So yeah. <laughs> I do remember I, you relaying the comment that Rebecca had the first time she met me though. Oh my God. I think about it every <laughs> once in a while and I'm just like, it was I don't... slightly offensive. It was. And it yeah. was, it was surprising to me because I don't, I don't think that like, I don't think that I, I, so um, what did she say? What did she say? Something about me not being as intimidating in physical appearance as she thought, or I, I'm bigger than she expected. Well, I'm not I as think, dainty. I think, so Rebecca is uh, a tall girl. Um, yeah. And she's, I don't want to call her big boned or something, but she's, she's, she's got a bigger frame or uh, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, whatever. Um, she's not petite or dainty. Right. And she is threatened. And neither am I. She's threatened by petite or dainty women particularly Ditto. the ones that I have dated in my life. Like when I think mm -hmm. about like the girls that I used to go out with, uh, who they were before her, they're all really small girls. So her whole, her whole perception of you before she met you was that you were going to be this dainty little thing. Not even, no. Nope. And then, mm -mm. and then you weren't. So it wasn't no. even, it wasn't that you were bigger. I think she might've used the word husky or or sturdy <laughs> or something like that. I don't remember. No, the word that is used most often to describe me is sturdy. Yeah. Sturdy. Like I would be, if you ever got, you know, stranded on a desert island, you would want my frame. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, she was yeah. like, oh, 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 yeah, no big deal. That's, <laughs> like, that's fine. Yeah. She's not yeah. in the category, no. which is, which, which I think leans to the question, right? Like mm. part of the question is, what is a threat? Like, what is the threat? Um, yeah. Because I know for a fact that I'm in relationship with lots of women yes. that I have very healthy friendships with that are uh -huh. not a threat. And they are in all kinds of categories. They are old. They are, uh, they, they, they are children. They speak, um, they live uh, in foreign countries. They are clients. They are my uh -huh. therapist. They are, you know, yeah. like there are tons of females. Yeah. They're my neighbor uh, who live across the street and who are happily married to my my friend who lives across the street with her. You know, like yeah. there are tons and tons of people who don't check any concerning boxes, you know? And so- But how do you the, know that they're concerning boxes? Because well, here's for Rebecca, the thing. Like, they don't, they don't oh, check any it. concerning boxes for my relationship or for my wife. You yes. know what I mean? Like yeah. it's not- I think it's unique to the relationship, right? I mean, that's- It is totally, That's yeah. the deal. I mean, they might be, um, let's say I'm in a, let's say I'm not, but let's say I'm in a sex anonymous, sexaholics anonymous group or recovery mm -hmm. group where there are lots of women who are open and verbal about their sexuality. You know, right. it's not even people who are open and verbal about their sexuality. It's still context, right? Yeah. It's still the thing. Yeah. So, you know, this guy who has noted our friendship, um, I often think about our friendship, like how does it work and how do, why isn't it a problem? And what is the, 
deal. Yeah. Remember that one guy who had to quit listening to the podcast because he was pretty sure we were going to have an affair? And I was like, <laughs> yeah. it was like he like <laughs> left an Apple review. <laughs> He's like, I had to stop listening to this podcast because these two are going to, you know. And I was like, yeah. oh, honey. Like, yeah. You... <laughs> Zach sleeps when he comes. He sleeps in the bedroom next to me. Even I think Ryan has also like not been here. Like it was just time, the two yeah. of us bopping around. Yeah. yeah. Sharing a house. It is. Yeah. It is not going to happen. I can tell you that much. Um, I don't even so, get under the covers at your bed in your house. I just like sleep on top. You, sh <laughs> you should, because I make really nice smelling sheets for people. I put in the extra scented stuff. Oh, okay. That's sweet. Let's go back because you're but, talking about But I think the, the question box. is valid and I don't think the answer is crystal, crystal clear. I think it's context still, you know, okay. and that's where you have to sort of, so I'm happy to bat this around. I think we should, but I think, I think, should too. Um, I think a lot about these sorts of things because there's as much information as in what is a problem as there is in what is not a problem. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, okay. So I just remember like there's been a couple of times where I don't find someone physically attractive and, uh -huh. and I'm very verbal Twice. by the there's way with my husband. two times when I have not found someone physically attractive. <laughs> <laughs> two times. Everybody else. I'm like, you're beautiful. You're beautiful. <laughs> um, but you know, like, oh, this is actually really funny. I, I told, I told Ryan, we've got a guy that walks by our house and his nickname is hot dad. And mm -hmm. I know hot Holden dad. knows, yeah, Holden knows him as hot dad. He doesn't know he's hot dad. Yeah. And the reason is because I can say that's hot dad. And I know that my boundary is like, yeah, he, I find him physically attractive, but there's nothing on my end. Like there's mm -hmm. no, I know where my heart is. I know where my mind is. I know like my desire for or for not for him, but his nickname is hot dad. However, I am not going to tell him that I call him hot dad because that would breach a boundary mm -hmm. that would probably open a door on his end that I don't have control over. Mm -hmm. And I don't need that to be a part of our friendship dynamic of calling him hot dad. And mm -hmm. Ryan even said something like, oh, I'm going to tell him you called him hot dad. I was like, please don't. And it's not yeah. because I'm, I'm jealous. It's because I don't want to change the, the relational dynamic and the boundaries that are mm -hmm. established. And I certainly wouldn't want for his wife to hear that and mm -hmm. create her own, her own story around it. Um, but this is going back where I think sometimes people catch you by surprise where you have friendships with your attracted sex Mm -hmm. And you don't realize that you are, that you like that person or that something about them is intriguing. I was having this conversation with my mom yesterday and, um, I remember sitting down at a double date and I didn't find the female particularly attractive. I mean, they're an attractive couple, but I didn't think like, oh, this is going to be something Ryan would be interested in. Mm -hmm. And almost immediately the female and my husband just start talking about politics and they start talking about money economics uh, and there's, they are deep in conversation. Uh, and I had one of those moments where I was like, Oh no, uh, I'm feeling threatened because uh -huh. she's offering something that I can't offer. And uh, so it kind of pinged me a little bit of like, okay, there's a gap in our relationship that he is filling with this other person at this moment. He's having a uh -huh. really stimulating, engaging conversation and that's where I'm kind of like, is that, that's what this gentleman was talking about is I, there's a gap in my current relationship. Mm -hmm. And I previously told myself that I couldn't outsource it to other females. Uh -huh. Now I'm outsourcing and it feels great. Uh -huh. And my question that I want to hone in on is like, when does that get into dangerous territory? And how uh -huh. would you know? How would you uh -huh. know that by outsourcing you're now in a place that is jeopardizing your relationship with your partner um, and, you know, creating some wonky boundaries. Yeah. I always go to Shirley Glass. Shirley Glass wrote this book called Not Just Friends. It's kind of the clinician's Bible for infidelity. It's not really like somebody's opinion or even theories about it. It's like kind of research-based. <laughs> and she kind of has this sort of library of, of check marks that you need to be paying attention to. And it's somewhere in the neighborhood of like, uh, if, if you're with somebody, if you're with somebody in the opposite sex and they could be a potential alternative to your spouse. So again, like my therapist who has really good boundaries and, you know, is ethically bound, not an alternative to my spouse. I suppose there are some therapists who are not ethically, sure. you know, strong or yeah. whatever, but, or, yeah. you know, these like super old people or children, like those aren't alternatives to my spouse. So that's kind of this one piece. The second piece is, do you have a, um, 
do you have, a, are they friends of the marriage? Like, are they friends of your um, marriage or do you, do you, can you talk, if you talk negatively about it, do they pile on with you? You know, like, is, mm-hmm. you're like, oh, my wife's driving me crazy. And like, yeah, your wife is driving you crazy, you know? Or yeah. are they like, well, you, maybe you should get some therapy or maybe you should, da, 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 or why don't we have you guys over for dinner? Like, that's kind of yeah. the, the other one. And then the third piece, I think, is this concept that she uh, proposes, which is the idea of walls and windows, like when walls and uh-huh. windows get reversed. So right. healthy marriages have uh, walls around the relationship that protect it from outside stress and strain. And the partners have clear windows into one another's lives. And so when walls and windows get reversed and I start to protect my relationship with the person. This other um, person. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's a, a that's a really good example for you and I. Like there's no wall around our relationship that Ryan and Rebecca don't have access into. Like they're, they don't, there's not a thing that that they... Like we talk once a week and we talk about stuff and they can listen to any yeah. conversation at any time. And we're friends. They're friends. Rebecca's a friend of your marriage. Ryan's a friend right. of my marriage. Like right. uh, you're a friend of my marriage, you know? Uh, yeah. And and even when you and I do talk negatively about our relationships, we talk about it in front of a million people. So it's not yeah. like it's this like secret thing that we're doing. In- yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a million, it, by the true. way. That's that. That's uh, our number is a million people listen to us every one million. Every week. Yeah, one million. every week. Yeah. Oh, I thought we were at six billion, but maybe yeah. you're jumping the gun a little bit. Yeah. No, no, no. Um, we just crossed a million a week. <laughs> we, hear that? Hear that? We, Athletic Greens. <laughs> <laughs> um. So okay, here's I, I had a new client, and she she was really concerned because she said. Here's what's going on, man. This is, I feel like we've, we're going to have to hop off here in a second. I'm just getting to juicy part Mm. is she said, I, um, I want to know, like, am I having an emotional affair? Like, where is the line between appreciating? Yes. Okay. Well, I mean, it's like, you know how that if you, if you're taking a quiz to find out if you drink too much, yes, (laughs) you drink too much. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But, but I also think in this case, it is kind of an interesting area of, of what do they call that? It's, um, it's not like the, the other person is even involved. Like let's, I, I'm mm. using this example of hot dad, but like, like this mm-hmm. fictitious person mm-hmm. of where I become, I become like infatuated with the idea or the concept and I latch it on to mm-hmm. this person and this person, I don't even engage with them. Maybe, maybe mm-hmm. I've become infatuated with a character that I saw in a movie, maybe Deadpool. Yeah. That's what yeah. it is. Okay. So can I have an emotional affair with Deadpool if I am visualizing that person during sex, if I am thinking about them, if I am playing out in my mind and it's taking up cognitive space, a lot of energy is going toward my thought process about them. Mm -hmm. Um, And obviously there can be another person involved that you actually have a relationship with. But that mm-hmm. person might not be a consenting participant in this mm-hmm. in this dynamic at all, right? Like it's a crush, it's one sided. Yeah, is like that you're an emotional the, affair? The yeah, the guy who yeah. is three cubicles down or something like that. Right, and that person has absolutely no idea. They haven't crossed boundaries. It's just mm-hmm. that your brain, your mind, your emotions, your thought processes, all of that is going toward that individual. Um, is that an emotional affair? What would you call that? Well, I, I, I'll go back and say, no, I don't think that's an emotional affair. I think right. that that's worth thinking about. I think it's worth learning about. I mean, as mm-hmm. you were describing kind of what was going on inside of her head for what reasons, I was sort of like, that's kind of what happened to me and my brother this weekend. Like, I was huh. like, what's going on? Like, what do I think about this guy who is churning okay. up all these feelings inside of me? And uh-huh. I can either act out on that and like go to shame or go to darkness or go to like, uh, shutting him out, or yeah. I can just turn that inquiry inside and go, Oh, I wonder what's to learn from me here. I wonder what's going on. Why am I attracted to Deadpool? Right. What, or what's going on? Or what's going on in my relationship right now? Yeah. That is crying out for adventure, crying out for a little bit of, you know, mm. levity or, you know, I think that's interesting. Yeah. But yeah. What, what would you intervene in at that? I mean, like if you're having an affair, particularly in the context of therapy, we have to say, or we do say to clients, like, your relationship work, your primary relationship work isn't going to work if you're still actively involved with this fair right. partner, right? But, That's right. Yeah. But so you have to kind of intervene right there. But what would you intervene in if she just has an active thought life, you know? 
Well, sort of I mean, go, like, the oh, first you need to stop having an active thought life, or do you have to turn no. that inquiry inside and figure out like that's what's going exactly on there? it. Yeah. yeah. So it's putting a pause and sort of normalizing the process. It is normal for you to find other people attractive, physically attractive. It's normal for you to respect, adore, admire, appreciate another human being. It's normal for you to enjoy an engaging conversation or a smile or an energy that someone brings to the table. That is all very normal. Um, when the, what I would help for her to do is identify like what what is your goal? If your goal is to feel more close and connected to your partner, then if you're spending time in this fantasy world thinking about this other person or this other schema, right? Like this isn't even, couldn't even be a human being. It might even be just a schema of like, this is something that I find attractive is like you said, get curious. But if the thoughts are so intrusive and you find that like it's keeping you from connecting with your partner, then I would I would practice some real like CBT, like cognitive behavioral uh, therapy of learning uh -huh. how to thought stop, learning how to change your mind process. Uh -huh. And that can even be if you're in an active affair with someone like uh -huh. you are communicating with another person and it feels really, really good and it becomes so addicting and intoxicating then how do you take control of that? And for a lot of people, it's cutting it off completely and going cold turkey. Is it, anyway, that's a whole yeah. other topic. No, I think that there's a lot there. And I think that there's, again, the other level of this is, why don't you talk about it with your partner? And I understand that may right. feel dangerous, you know, but if you come out of the movie, Deadpool and Wolverine, and you're like, man, I find Deadpool really hot, but not so much Wolverine. Totally. <laughs> you know, you could at least go, I wonder what the difference is or what's going on for me there. Or what is the, yeah. what's there or what, it, I mean, I, some people geek out on that stuff. I sure do. Like, and for other people, that's really hard, but I think there's as much information in what is there as there is in what is not there. Um, mm -hmm. So when you find yourself kind of drawn in one direction, sure, pay attention to that, but also like, why not that other direction? Um, because that that's pregnant information right there. Mm. Yeah. That's I think you brought data. up a <laughs> are you using the word pregnant on purpose? It's not a yeah. word I use very often. Yeah. It means um, it's like, aside. it's try, it's try, it's like it's growing and it's, it's getting bigger. Yeah. And it's going to come out eventually. Like, what is that information? You know? Yeah. Well, I think the big part of that is turning towards your partner. If the goal is to be more connected to your partner and you have a thought life, a fantasy world or something that you find very stimulating, um, that's the difference between walls and windows. A wall is to keep it to yourself, keep it private. A window into your relationship, which is what we are kind of proposing here, is turning to your partner and saying, man, I, I got to tell you, there's something about Deadpool and I just don't know what it is, but it's hot. And it's like, yeah, it's Ryan Reynolds. That is, that's what is hot. Yeah. But anyway, or his and humor. I don't, I don't maybe. think you said this, I but um, uh, you're entitled to your private thought life. Like that, mm -hmm. you get to have that. The, the thing yeah. that I think the thing that you said, I can't remember if you said it out loud or not, is if it's in the way of right. you connecting to your partner, then exactly. it, it may need to be a little less private. Um, and that doesn't yeah. actually mean with your partner. could be with your therapist, could be with your journal, could be with your, you uh, know. Um, but like, I think that's, if it's in the way, that's right. where I think you start to uh, appreciate whether or not this is out of bounds, for lack of yeah. a better phrase. So. I have a feeling this is going to be an interesting uh, this is going to stir up. So if you have some thoughts, some ideas, more questions, um, this episode, hit us up on Instagram, DM us, send us an email info at marriage therapy radio.com. I would love to know your thoughts. I would love to know your stories. If you want to share your story, that would be super interesting for Patreon. We'll do an episode of like, let, let's hear about it. Yeah. That'd be cool. We'll, we'll, um, we'll, yeah. Well, let's, let's land this plane. We've got to go and chat with one of our favorite um, therapists on her podcast. So yeah, um, let's hop off and we'll see you guys next week. Okay. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Marriage Therapy Radio. This was an interesting topic. And if it was interesting to you, you have more questions, you have another topic, maybe even like a very specific experience that you had that you want to share. You have any questions? Um, send us an email, info at marriagetherapyradio.com, or you can slide into Zach's DMs, Marriage Therapy Radio, on Instagram. Thanks for all of your time and attention, making your relationship better today than it was yesterday. Mm -hmm.